Hey there, folks. So tonight I've got something, uh, something real special. Now, you're probably looking at the title of this video and I haven't even introduced what I've got in the box here. And you're thinking, hey, Mako, haven't you done that before? Yes. Yes, I have. I uh, did this exact same kit already, uh, but we're going to redo it because there have been some incremental improvements to it, um, enough so that I, I think it warrants a new video. Um, and I found my other screwdriver. It's been missing a while. That's nice. Anyway, let's get into it. So what we've got here is a brand new um, Funny Playing IPS Ready shell. Highly recommend getting one of these for the laminated kits. You don't need one, but it's a heck of a lot easier because otherwise there's a lot of trimming you have to do. You have to cut the window especially big. You don't need this shelf. It just helps. It makes things easier. Um, but you need to trim that window open quite a bit and you need to do some cutting on the inside because the screen does still overlap on the inside. If you don't trim that, it's gonna, it, it's gonna ruin your day. Um, However, I did say it was new, didn't I? There have been some minor improvements with the fit and finish of the shell. Uh, I have been told that the uh, middle screw post issue that we were having, uh, well, I didn't really have it with this build, but I have seen quite a few people have issues with it. Uh, I've been told it's fixed with the new model. Um, but otherwise, the accessories are pretty much the same. You get screws and apparently an IR cover. Uh, also got new buttons here. Uh, I did use these for another build as well, but I pulled them out so we can use them for this build because I think it makes sense to show off the new buttons. Um, the mold has been tweaked for the D-pad so that you no longer have to file down that little middle nubbin. And the power switch feels significantly better than it did. I remember when I did uh, this one, I had some trouble with the fit and finish and then ended up using the original power switch instead of the uh, button set that it came with. Uh, another improvement is that you get a uh, IR window instead of no IR window. Um, in the case of clear, yeah, I mean, there's no reason not to use it, but if you want to actually use your uh, IR functionality, which you know, if you play one of the six games that supports it, I don't even think it's six games, whatever. Uh, if you play one of those games and you want to actually use it, use your original IR window or get clear buttons and use that one. Either way. Anyway, here we go. Here's a new kit, new packaging. Quite nice. I rather dig the packaging. It's, uh, it's a nice touch. Um, I believe they come with a little bit of foam in here to keep everything in place, but my order was a custom order and I got a few extra goodies. We've also got the LED button kit, but I will be doing a separate video on that. Um, it does make sense to install this before the LCD kit, but we're going to install it backwards because that's just how I do things. Uh, anyway, moving on. Here is what we get with the new kit. We get the LCD assembly. They come in uh, brand new colors, by the way. Um, I chose red. I was playing out this build and I was thinking to myself, gee, what would be the uh, worst possible color combination I could do? And I ended up with red and yellow. But now that it's together, I don't actually hate it. <laughs> uh, anyway, you also get the stickers, which last time I had no idea what to do with, but this time I know exactly what to do with. Uh, we'll get more. We'll get to that in a bit. In a bit. Um, and then we've got the ribbon itself. So there have been quite a few questions popping up from uh, other people that I've noticed. People look at this and then they look at my video and go, "Hey, it's a new kit. This is totally different." My friends, the hardware on this end of the ribbon is identical to the older version that I did in uh, this install here. Uh, the only difference is the layout is slightly different, but at the top here we've got this little extra foldable portion because this is the touch sensor. Now you can use either the built-in touch sensor or you can solder on your own touch sensor if you want. That's what, that's what that solder pad is for. 
or you can use the included one. And notice it even comes with one if you want to use that. You also get uh, three wires there, two for the buttons and then one for the power because you do need to solder up the power on this. Anyway, let us go ahead and get started. I am going to set this stuff aside for the time being because first we need to tear down our donor here. Actually, I think I can just leave that right there. So tonight's donor is this wonderful Game Boy Color that I definitely have not been inside already and repaired. Uh, we can just completely ignore this note on the front because it definitely has power now. But uh, just normal game. Oh no, my save file is corrupted. That's unfortunate because this is the game I usually test with. I will have to reflash that. Yep. Oh well. So be it. Shit happens. Batteries die. Let's go ahead and get this torn down. Luckily, that is not my only test cartridge. That's just the specific cartridge I usually test with. There should be no difference with my other one, but I don't know. I like to keep things as consistent as possible when it comes to the power usage tests I do. But you saw in my other Game Boy, I literally have another copy of Pokemon Silver, and this one works. Oh, except I never flashed my save to this one. Ah, I'm gonna have to pause. And, uh, wait, no. There's a third option. Pokemon Gold I repaired a little while back. This one should work fine. And, same game. Alright. Pull that apart. Now, normally... With uh, the generic aftermarket shells, I recommend reusing your OEM screws just because it tends to work out a little bit better. They tend to be a little bit more sturdy, less liable for stripping. I mean, unless you're into that part. Uh, but with the funny playing shells, they do come with their own screws, and it is highly recommended that you use their screws instead because the screw posts aren't necessarily the same length. And... The OEM screws are a little bit too long, and that will ruin your shell. So, just don't. Oh, I should have left those in. What am I doing? So we got to do a power test. All right. So slap gold in there, because unfortunately my silver, the battery has finally depleted. Or I yanked it out of something without uh, safely shutting down one of the two. Since it's my test cart, you know, it's highly likely. Alright, so same thing as usual. I'm just going to boot it up into this game to get a quick power benchmark. I have my power supply set to 2.4 volts. Uh, by the way, I, people ask me in just about every video... This is an MDP XP from Miniware. There is a link in the description if you want to check it out. It's not cheap, but it works like a hot damn, and I love it. All right, so in the overworld in Pokemon Gold, at 2.4 volts, this Game Boy Color pulls uh, 78 to 83 milliamps. Uh, volume's up in the exact same place I always test with because this literally has my Pokemon Silver save on it. And, uh, you know, it's the same cart. It's a, it's an original cart, refurbished, but it's an original cart, uh, not aftermarket, not reproduction or anything. So our number value should still be comparable. Let us go ahead and test out the kit, make sure that works. All right. 
So before doing the install on the kit, we do want to make sure that everything actually works because sometimes shit happens and uh, something gets damaged in shipping. And that is exactly why I have a stack of all of these LCDs because these are all DOA. But don't let that don't let that discourage you. It's I, I, I got those from RGRS who was gonna toss them otherwise um, because they're no good. Uh, so that is probably the DOAs from I don't know, thousand or so orders, maybe more. I honestly have no idea how many units he moves. We are somewhat affiliated, yes, but I don't work for him. I just make videos. Anyway, we do need to solder to test this, unfortunately. It does not just work, and I have already forgotten where it needs to be soldered to. Fairly certain it goes to the common pin. Go ahead and boot up my soldering iron. We will use the short black wire for that. Get the common pin. Noise and tinned, perhaps. There we go. Noise and tinned. Get that wire soldered in there. And then we're going to solder to the power pad over here, which seems kind of silly that they moved it, but you know, here we are. By the way, if this is your first time soldering or one of your first few times soldering, I highly recommend picking up a solder practice kit to get the feel for it. I tend to make soldering look easy because I've been doing it for over a decade. Um, it's not easy and it doesn't make sense to learn how to solder using your $60 backlight kit and your God knows how expensive Game Boy Color. Um, it, it is what it is. I'm not gatekeeping. I'm not saying don't do this if you can't solder. I'm just saying don't learn on your expensive hardware because that doesn't make sense. Solder practice kits are only a few dollars. Right. Pop open AliExpress. You can uh, type in solder practice kit. There's plenty of options to choose from. in and let's try it out. I need a few things. We need the game, we need the power supply which I forgot to shut off. Good thing I didn't short anything. Red to plus, black to minus. So we can still see the power supply, and here goes nothing. Hey, it does work. That's good. Ooh, but here's why we tested it. I'll come back to that in just a second. Let's look at the power usage first. Uh, so at 2.4 volts, this thing is pulling... 215 to 224 milliamps. I don't know what brightness it's on, but we can use the touch sensor. We're at minimum brightness. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven levels of brightness. At minimum brightness, still 2.4 volts. We've got 172 to 
180 milliamps. It was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I believe it was. And so now we're at max brightness, pulling anywhere from 277 to 296, I think it was, milliamps. Now nah, we'll call it 291. I don't see 296. I think that was 286 and then 291. Anyway, good enough. One of the neat things about this kit is we have the illuminated uh, Game Boy logo down there. I think it's kind of neat. Um, but while we're while our attention is focused at the bottom, I pop that game out. Here's why we test it out of the shell first. Remember I was talking about those DOA screens? Yeah. It does happen. It is what it is. If you get something like this, as long as you test it before installing, uh, talk to the vendor. They'll be reasonable. They'll get you a new screen. It's no problem. I have also seen uh, in some cases this will go away if you just leave it alone long enough. I don't know what it is about these specific LCDs that it does that, but it does. Sometimes also you can give it a little bit of pressure and that'll make it go away. Sometimes it makes it worse. So contact the vendor first. But it is what it is. And I don't know that I'm going to be using the screen. Or maybe I will because it's just a test build anyway and it doesn't matter. But I've got more screens. Speaking of, I think... Unfortunately, I think these are also dead screens, though. They weren't in my pile of dead screens, so I don't remember. Uh, yeah, I guess that one's dead. <laughs> oh, maybe it just wasn't plugged in. Let me try that again. Yeah, there we go. That one's fine. So we'll use this one. This is why we do testing. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. I am going to detach that. <laughs> and this is why I was saying sometimes give them a little bit of time because those were in my DOA pile and that one is perfectly fine. All right. So let us carry on with the install now that we know we have a working kit, more or less. Next step is going to be to check the shell because sometimes there's a little bit of flashing in the corners that needs to be removed because we don't want to insert the screen and then have the shell tweak up on the screen a little bit. Take this one as an example. As an example, if you tweak up on the on the screen from the corner, you can see it's flexing just a little bit. But you, that's how you get those little artifacts in the corner. You insert it into a shell, tweaks up on the corner, ruin the screen. I didn't want to do that with this one just in case. All right. Actually, these might not be DOA, these might just be other examples of colors. Got black one. Oh, and I've got a white one. We'll use the uh, dot matrix style one. Because that's what I think of when I think of yellow shell. Don't forget to remove the adhesive when you stick that in. I am not going to because I need this shell for something else and I don't want to have to rip a screen out. So in my case, I'm just going to use a little bit of tape to hold it in. But if you use that screen adhesive, it'll be totally fine. Oh, I guess let's do buttons next. I got the uh, clear ones. They're actually like a little bit of a pearl. K 
camera's not going to pick it up where, very well, but I think they look wicked cool. And I neglected to get new membranes. I don't know if Funny Playing is m currently making membranes. I know they plan to. Um, but I just did, just did a video on this thing, on the uh, light kit I have in this thing. I got new membranes in that one. Those are pretty decent. I'll link them down in the description. All right, now. Need to get this new ribbon to oopsie doodle. This might actually be easier to do before you put the screen in the shell. Do a test fit. Find out. One thing you absolutely do not want to do is press down on the connector on the screen. That'll put a lot of pressure on the screen and it might cause issues. Alright, here we go. I totally forgot to wire up the buttons. Well, at least I didn't screw it down yet. Okay. Let's wire up the buttons. I also forgot the sticker. Let's do the sticker. I'm glad I didn't stick that down. Good lord. All right, we need the button wiring to do the uh, logo color adjust. I forget which specific gears. So I'm going to use my multimeter to find out. Put it on continuity mode. And if we look at the button traces down here, bring that in a little. If you look at this real close, you'll see that there are two, um, two traces repeated along these eight contacts. So you have one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four are the same, and then five, six, seven, eight are all the same. Uh, one of those is ground because this uses a common ground button array. So the easy way to test this, we can find ground. Battery minus is ground. See that one's ground, that one's ground, that one's ground, that one's ground. And we'll have the same thing on both buttons. But not all the pads will short to ground. We want to find one that does not short to ground and then we can search for the via. So for select, we can use that P12 test point, but I don't like that test point. I don't think that results in clean looking wiring. Or we can go over here on the top left, or middle left, and it's this very bottom via right above the white silk screen, but there's also another one over here. It is for select this rightmost of this group of five. And I bet start is the same thing as that ground. No. Oh no, starts down here. So start is this leftmost of this bottom group of three. Select is the rightmost of this top group of five. Or you can even go up here and use the vias up here. Um, what do we have? Start. This will go one of these up here, no, that one, that top one, and then select it's the bottom one, right under it. Yep. Cool, cool. 
I think that's what we'll do. It'll make a noise and easy. Hell, we can even shorten the wiring. Make it nice and clean, eh? If you're doing the uh, LED button kit thingy, this thing, there is a start and select pad that you can solder to right there, and that'll make your life easier. Uh, I'm still going to use these because I think it's cleaner looking, but this hooks into start and select as well, and it breaks out the pads for your backlight kit. Makes it nice and easy. Alright. I guess I have no nails. <laughs> Good lord. There we go. Oh my god, this is 32 gauge wire. I'll have to use my new wire stripper on it. One moment. Ah, took me a while to figure out, but uh, neat tool. Works like a hot damn. All right, tin that. Those are nasty looking joints, let's fix that. Soldering to these vias can be kind of difficult, uh, especially with the improper soldering iron tip, which unfortunately, as much as I loathe to admit it, my knife tip is the improper tip. But easiest way to do it is get a big old solder ball on there and then just drag that over the vias until enough solder works its way in to start transferring heat and get solder in the proper way and then get some tweezers that's one to myself. That's two. Now we're done with the buttons. Could have been better, but all things considered, I think it Just fold the slack down and then the rest of the slack will be taken up when we fold it up. Easy peasy, right? right. So next, let us look at the screen sticker that I totally forgot to install earlier. So it comes with two here. And these are optional as you could tell by my uh, previous video. Oh, it's gonna be one of those days, isn't it? Oh, 
There we go. This one can apply right to the bottom here. And the entire purpose is literally just to cover up the screen and give you like a solid, solid surface to look at. This back one, pretty similar. It doesn't do a whole lot in terms of um, preventing light bleed. A lot of that comes from the sides of the screens. But I suppose it does give a little bit. will also help to insulate. I just realized I'm doing this out of frame. My bad. You especially want to test your screen before sticking these stickers down. Much easier to connect out of the shell. And then what's the easiest way to do this? Yeah, we can feed that through and then insert it. Easy peasy. almost looks salvaged. Huh. Interesting. Alright, so new shell comes with three short screws and seven long ones. I guess I get an extra. Lucky me. We're only going to use two of the short screws. One of them goes on the left. The other goes on the right. I will explain momentarily. get at least one of these torqued down before I start getting distracted and losing screws. So the reason we only want to use two, and by all means you can use all three if you like, but I recommend using two, is because even though it is allegedly fixed, I have not tested it, but I also didn't experience the problem originally, so I can't really test it, the battery compartment on the funny playing shells is flat in the middle. The reasoning for this is because I believe they're going to be making a lithium ion mod, or if they aren't making a lithium ion mod, they just want to make it easier to support lithium ion mods. So they made it flat on original Game Boy Color shells. Uh, I'm not going to flip it over because this has a bunch of screws in it. You can see that little crease down the middle. That's where the screw head in the middle used to sit. Because this is flat, it's also flat on this side. Now you can work around that by just drilling a hole exactly where the screw is. Uh, for the clear shells, just place it over there, put a little mark, and then drill the hole. It'll be fine. Uh, but the reason we want to exclude it is because some people tend to overcompensate. They think it's they think the screw is going to rub, so they overcompensate by just really cranking it down. 
and that'll cause the front of the shell to crack. Another thing they'll do is they won't install it enough at all, and then the battery compartment does actually put pressure on it, which also causes the front to crack. So, unless you get it the proper t torque, you're going to crack the front. So, it's easier to just omit that one, and then we don't have to worry about it. Uh, it's not too difficult to get the proper torque, but, you know, why, why, uh, why bother fussing with it? All right. Actually, I wonder if we can do... You know what? Let's, let's try something different. So, I'll install my air cover. Normally with the touch sensor, we would uh, fold that in there and stick it up against the top. There is no adhesive for the sensor itself. Uh, if you saved some adhesive from like your other screen lenses and stuff, you could use a little bit of that. Uh, but we're gonna try something. I'm gonna leave that unfolded. Sticking my power switch in there. Perhaps. There we go. Stick that in there. Oops. I already closed it. I didn't mean to close it. I'm going to fold this backwards on itself. That way it sticks up against the back of the lens, or against the back of the shell. I think that might work nicely. So full disclosure on that other LCD that I had, the red one, earlier, when I had everything in the box, this one, I went ahead and jammed the buttons in on top and then closed the box and then realized that they don't quite fit. So I very well could have broken this LCD. I did that right before the video. I'm like, oh yeah, this will be neat. I'll just present it. You know, I'll throw everything in the box. No, 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 no. The buttons do not fit in the box with everything else. Um, I shouldn't have forced it closed, and I did anyway. All right, look at that, all done. Uh, now where the heck are my batteries? Never mind, I found them. We're gonna use the Thunderbolt Magnums. I don't recommend these, by the way, but I already have them, and they do still work. All right, so first off, I'm seeing some glitching on the screen. I'm wondering if maybe this was, that's why it was in the DOA pile. I also don't really have a good uh, power LED uh, because I never actually peeled off the adhesive. That's my bad. But I went into that, I went into that knowing exactly what I was doing. So let's flip that off. Pop that out a little. One of the nice things about not actually sticking the screen down is if we need to reseat it, it comes out exceptionally easy. I did notice the connector on this screen doesn't quite fit, doesn't quite snap in the way the other ones normally do. Yeah, that still don't look too great. All right, so maybe this was a bad screen. No worries. 
we will switch back to the red one. No, we won't, because I don't know what I just did with the red one. Let's try this one. Oh, that one's got some bad, bad stuff going on. All right, that's okay though. It's good enough for this purpose. We've got our touch sensor right there, working great. Um, I totally forgot the controls of this thing. I believe if we hold start and select, it goes into modes and then we can use the touch sensor while game is highlighted. Uh, what does that do? Oh, the touch sensor cycles between the uh, modes. My apologies. And then we can use... No? Maybe? Oh, this adjusts the uh, position, I believe. No, I don't. Oh, yeah. You can't hold it. You gotta press. Each time you can see the uh, screen is moving downward on my uh, LCD you can only go so far though we'll move it back up a test ROM would be good for this next is uh, left and right so I'm gonna skip straight to color we can change the color of the logo pretty similar to the previous kit and then do special I'm gonna go with that because I think that matches the shell. And then start and select to get out of there. And then I believe we can hold the touch sensor. And that'll give us the uh, pixel modes. Yep. Pixel grid emulation, you have one. Oh, and that's it. I thought there were more options. I thought there were like five options. Oh, there we go. There's another one. There's another one. There's yet another one. And there's the last one. And off. My personal favorite is off. I'm going to leave it off. Let's throw a game in here. Why not? My Pokemon Silver that wasn't working. Oh no. What time is it? It is eight. Yes. And fourteen minutes. Yeah. What's up with that sound? That doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound like I remember. I played this game enough. What the heck? It's actually bugging me now. That sounds right. That's weird. There must be something wrong with this Game Boy. It was having sound issues. Um, that is so bizarre. I thought I fixed them, but clearly I didn't check too well.
and we'll overrate my save because I have it backed up. I don't really care. I'll just restore it. Cart probably needs a new battery anyhow. Oh, let's see if they fixed that bug. So if you do A B start select to uh, soft reset, a lot of the time I believe. Oh no. They did fix it. The usually the menu gets stuck. Or maybe I'm misremembering. I don't know, but there you go. Pretty neat. The uh, performance is going to be the exact same as the last kit. I'm not going to bother running through all those tests. If you're interested, um, I will link my other video down below. You can check that out. It's good stuff. Nothing uh, too surprising. Yeah, that whole pressure thing doesn't seem to uh, give us the results we want. That sounds so weird. Let's try out some other screens. So that one goes in the bad pile. I do have another screen that is for sure good somewhere. And I don't just mean stuck in a Game Boy. But, uh, were I to... Ah, oh, yeah, that one's fine. I'll just use that one. I can't even insert it. I'm getting caught on something. Probably shouldn't do that while it's on because as I have this tilted forward, that whole copper edge of the screen hits the uh, pins, which is exactly what this is getting caught on right now. So I take a little bit of tape. Just apply that to the bottom. And look at that, drops right in. Almost. There it goes. Boom! Easy peasy. Oops. Until I tilt the thing forward. <laughs> but again, peel off the adhesive, it'll stick right in. I'm just not doing that for a specific reason. Um, I... Oh! Let's... Now that we have a white border, let's pull that up and go into start and select. Now you can see... the screen adjustment a little bit more clearly. Why don't I set that down so it's not shaking and zoom that in. Ta-da! In case for some reason yours isn't, isn't quite centered, you can uh, fine tune it. Hit the touch sensor, go to the next one and then we have horizontal. And then we get back into the uh, logo color, but hold start and select to exit. Boom, Bob Janty. Works like a hot damn, don't it? And again, I don't actually hate how this build turned out. And I hate that because I was looking at this going, hey, what are the ugliest colors I can, I can get? But I actually kind of dig this yellow. I didn't think I would, but I do. And that touch sensor there works surprisingly well. Uh, the intent or the hope was I wouldn't be able to hit it from the top. Actually, I should test that with a cart in. Okay, just making sure I can find it. And yeah, I can't hit that at all. That's great. So that works even better. I wonder if that's actually intentional. Don't know, but I like it. I'm sticking with it. I dig it.
But yeah, new buttons. D-pad works great. I didn't have to trim that at all. I know I said I had it in another build. You'll have to take my word for it. Um, they do work. I didn't trim this at all. Uh, power switch. It's a little tight. Just a hair. But maybe if I back these screws off, it'll be less... Oh yeah, that's fine. It's better, because with the old ones, you had to like really get in there and then jam it up. But this one, one finger, it's fine. So all in all, largely the same kit. Um, some minor tweaks for uh, improvement in uh, the install experience. And yeah, it worked out pretty good. I'm happy with that. That's nice. So uh, I guess on that note, I will uh, get out of here. I'll let you guys get back to it. Links in the description. I will link to the kit. I'll link to the shell. I'll link to the buttons. I'll link to the membranes. I will link to my other video on the other version of this kit. And eventually, I'll link to that too. It'll be nice. So uh, on that note, I guess I got to give a shout out to uh, Retro Game Repair Shop. Uh, give them a big old thanks for sending this hardware my way to check out. Um, I think it's pretty cool of them to do that stuff. They they send that stuff to me. They don't they don't expect me to make a video. the The agreement is that I check it out and give them my honest opinion. That's it. The fact that I'm making videos is just a bonus here for me. Um, this is my I, I don't want to say I'm biased because that's not the correct word. Everyone has a bias, but this is my honest opinion. And I do like this kit. I think that as far as the kits go, if you're backlighting a Game Boy Color, this is the way to do it. You want, you want a laminated screen. Trust me, it looks so much better than the other options. And it, it, it's one of those things you kind of have to see in person. If you have a modern smartphone... It's probably laminated, so you already know what it looks like. Compared to your Game Boy, you can see the big difference between the lens and and the screen right up against the lens. It just it's so good. I grabbed another laminated one for example. Wasn't the best example, was it, Mako? Um only other example I have on my desk right now is an older slate, which is not laminated. You can see the screen's a little bit further away from the glass. Probably not the best example either because it's a lot closer to the glass than uh, normal Game Boys. But if you haven't seen one, you'll have to take my word for it. I do genuinely like these shells. They are a lot better than the other generic aftermarket shells. But also, if you're doing a laminated kit, it makes the kit largely drop in aside from the one, three wires you have to solder. If you're soldering one, you might as well go all the way and solder the other two. Um... And, you know, I was raving about the buttons. I do I do like the color, but they do actually feel like OEM buttons. So, you know, if you want to mix it up, go for it. And that's all I got, man. It's good stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you all next time. Stay cool. Oh, quick addendum. I was getting ready to do, uh, solder a new battery into this thing, and I don't even have to do that. I forgot this is the one that has the, um... HDR is mod in there. So how convenient is that? Wow. Let's check the voltage. Do, do, do. Ah, it's not dead. I don't know why it corrupted. It's, it's low enough that I'd replace it if I was gonna actually play this game. But we've still got Another few months out of this battery, at least. Or we should. So, I don't know. Till next time. Thanks for watching, guys.